one. Have you ever wondered about where writers find inspiration for their movies? Melodramas, comedies and documentaries don't really raise any questions. The events in them may well be a reflection of life, but what about horror movies? The frightening events that are shown in them aren't from real life, right? You just don't want to believe in it, but you have to. Sometimes real events are the basis of horror movies, so get ready. Now we're going to tell you about eight horror films that happened in real life. Let's get it on. It. In August 2017, before the screening of the horror movie It, professional clowns in many countries of the world called to ban the film because it cultivates fear in people. However, to be honest, these guys worried about their profession woke up a bit too late. The reputation of clowns has long been spoiled. It can't be recovered now, and all because of the wickedness of a man named John Wayne Gacy Jr. This serial killer terrified Cook County, Illinois for six long years. As a result of his activities, 33 people were killed, and everyone remembers John as the clown killer. What's the best way to gain a person's trust? Introduce yourself as a friendly, funny clown, of course. In the 70s, people weren't afraid of them, therefore unsuspecting victims willingly got in Gacy's car, and nobody saw these trusting people ever again. It was Gacy's horrible story that inspired Stephen King to create Pennywise, the main character of the book It and the movie of the same name. 3096 Ten-year-old Natasha Kampusch lived in Vienna and never came late after school. That's why when on March 2, 1998, she didn't come home after school, her mother got worried, and she was right to. It turned out that even though the girl went to school in the morning, she didn't make it to the classroom. A little later, there was a 12-year-old witness who said that she saw Natasha halfway to school. Somebody put her in a white van and drove away in an unknown direction. The police organized a mass investigation, which, however, did not lead to anything. While the police searched for the child and examined the cars matching the description, Natasha began to live a new life in prison. Her kidnapper was a man named Wolfgang Pricklapil. He carefully planned the crime and did everything so that nobody would ever find the girl. Under his house, he built a secret room of five square meters. It was located at a depth of two and a half meters under the ground, had no windows, and was completely soundproof. Three massive doors divided Natasha from freedom, one of them weighing 150 kilograms. Inside the room, there were lockers, a TV, a table, a chair, a sink, a fan, the sound of which, according to Natasha, was kind of a challenge for her. From time to time, Pricklapil let the girl take walks. There was no way to escape, and Natasha spent most of the time in this small room, feeling like an animal locked in a cage. The captivity lasted from the 2nd of March 1998 to the 23rd of August 2006. That's when she escaped. The girl spent 3,096 days with the maniac, isolated from the rest of the world. When she finally made it to the police, she was exhausted and weak, but still unharmed. But the police couldn't even catch Wolfgang Pricklapil. When he found out about Natasha's escape, he jumped in front of a train. This terrible story became the basis for a biographical horror film called 3096 Days. After telling you this story, we'd like to remind you, never get in a car with strangers. Annabelle in the 70s, a girl named Donna received a Raggedy Ann doll for her birthday, and she couldn't even imagine what a gift she was presented with. Of course, she was happy at first. Despite the fact that she was in her 20s, she did love dolls. One day, Donna woke up and found a note on the floor next to the doll which said, Help me. Donna and her roommate decided that someone was sneaking into their house at night. They put scotch tape on the door and placed the rug in a special way to check, but the rug stayed in the same position. The scotch tape didn't move, and the cryptic notes continued to appear. Soon, inexplicable sounds could be heard too. Something strange was clearly happening in the apartment. 
Doors and windows opened on their own, and the doll, as if alive, moved from place to place. If you like horror movies, you probably know the doll that we're talking about. The story involved the well-known American researchers of the paranormal, Ed and Lorraine Warren. According to them, the doll was possessed by the devil himself, so they called an exorcist and then took her to the museum as an exhibit. If you watch the film Annabelle, you may have noticed an inscription saying that the film is based on a true story. Now you know that this is not a writer's trick to make you fear more or create an ominous atmosphere. Annabelle really exists, although it doesn't look quite as shown in the film. Open Water This story begins with some very joyful events. However, it ends, but oh, let's talk about everything in order. Thomas Lonergan and Eileen Haynes met at the university and fell in love with each other at first sight. They traveled a lot, loved scuba diving, and were a perfect couple. Ambassador, the Honorable Kaufa <laughs> On January the 25th, 1998, the couple went to dive in the Great Barrier Reef with a team. They didn't need an instructor. By that time, both Thomas and Eileen had already 160 dives under their belt. That day, they dived three times, and the fatal dive was the last and the third. While the couple was deep under the water, the team incorrectly counted the returned divers, so they didn't notice Thomas and Eileen weren't back. The ship went away, leaving two people completely alone in the middle of the ocean. The most striking thing is that nobody knew about the incident for about two days. It became known by accident. A team prepared a search, but everything was in vain. From time to time, parts of the wetsuits belonging to the couple were washed ashore. Neither Thomas nor Eileen were ever found. All that was left of them was a sign that was found on the shore six months later. Based on this story, the movie Open Water was filmed, although the main characters are named Daniel and Susan. Monster to perform the main role in this film, the beautiful Charlize Theron had to gain 13 kilograms and transform completely, all in order to play the role of the second woman maniac in the history of the US. The life of Eileen Carol Warnos didn't go well from the beginning. She never knew her father. Her mother left her and her brother. The children lived with their grandparents, and overall, it wasn't a good life. At the age of 14, she learned about her own pregnancy, and after giving birth to her child, she left school. And at the age of 15, she ended up without a roof over her head and began to engage in unpleasant work to somehow get the means to exist. Every year, her life was becoming more and more horrifying and sad. However, even this fact is no excuse for becoming a monster. The film tells the story of her life and her major crimes, and it was named like that for a reason. The woman committed her first murder on November the 30th, 1989. The victim was a man named Richard Mallory. The cops knew who I was. After Richard Mallory died, I left prints everywhere, and they covered it up. Turn me into a serial killer. In one year, Warnos killed seven men. Every time, she gave different statements to the court. At first, she told them she'd killed them to protect herself. You sabotaged my ass, society, and the cops, and the system. After that, the woman began to tell that she was engaged in robbery and didn't want to leave witnesses. And in the end, no one knew what motivated the seven brutal crimes. Eileen Carol Warnos is no longer alive. For her crime, she received a total of six death sentences. Her life will forever remain in history, thanks to the movie Monster. The Curse of Robert the Doll if you think that Annabelle is the only creepy doll in the world that starred in a movie, you're very mistaken. Meet Robert. His story supposedly begins in the early 20th century. First, it was owned by Robert Eugene Otto. According to legend, the doll was given to the boy by a maid, who put a terrible dark curse on it. It was the cause of the strange events that were happening in the house. The doll winked and moved from room to room. Sometimes Eugene talked to Robert, and the doll supposedly answered him. Over the past hundred years, Robert has had several owners. He brought ill luck to everyone who treated him badly. Today, the doll is at the Martin 
Botello Gallery, Key West Art and Historical Museum. Anyone who takes a picture of Robert without asking permission is cursed. That is why the museum receives dozens of letters every day, in which visitors apologize for their incivility and ask Robert to take their curse off of them. Apparently, its story isn't just a fiction, so it's not surprising that in honor of this story, a movie was created, The Curse of Robert the Doll. Primeval if you like traveling, we recommend you to be alert when you visit the waters in Burundi, because here lives the most famous Nile crocodile, whose story makes your blood run cold. His name is Gustave, and it's impossible to ascertain the exact amount of his human victims. According to the most conservative assumptions, in the last few years, the crocodile killed about two or three hundred people off the shores of the Ruzizi River. Nile crocodiles, as you know, can live for 70 to 100 years. Numerous attempts to catch Gustave didn't lead to anything, and the exact size of the monster is unknown. It's only clear that he is huge. Most likely, it's more than 6 meters long, and it weighs over a ton. It's hard to believe that Gustave is real, but he is, and he terrifies both local people and animals. The story of the giant man-eating crocodile is told in the movie Primeval. Deliver Us From Evil it's hard to believe that this film, which recounts the disturbing and inexplicable events that took place in New York, was based on a true story. However, it is true. The story of how an officer was forced to turn to an exorcist was based on the autobiographical book Beware the Night, written by former policeman Ralph Sarchi. The man says that during the service, he faced supernatural forces more than once. What he'd seen impressed him so much that in the end he even changed his profession, and today he works as an assistant priest. The film's director, Scott Derrickson, says that his film is not demon propaganda. However, he believes that people should take everything paranormal very seriously. Hey, stop being lazy, it's time to use that brain of yours. Welcome to Brain Time. Incredible facts from the past, the present, and even the future. The power of nature and wild animals. Amazing facts and unsolved mysteries. You'll find all this and much more here. Subscribe now, you won't regret it.